Reggae just extra with Ross Dennis. It's another day, another week, another month, and another year in the history of Bob Marley. Exactly this day, in November 1980, a German cancer specialist, Dr. Joseph Issels, began treating Bob Marley of cancer. Unfortunately, Bob Marley's condition began worsening under his care until he chartered a plane to return to Jamaica. While in flight, his condition became critical and the plane did an emergency landing in Miami where Marley passed away. My name is Ras Dennis and you are welcome back to another video by Reggae Just Extra. You are now watching Reggae Just Extra, the episode of Bob Marley Final Days. In this episode, we will take a closer look at the circumstances behind the death of Bob Marley and the role of Dr. Joseph Issels, a German physician known for promoting an alternative cancer treatment. Kindly stay tuned and do remember to subscribe to this channel, like, share, and most importantly hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. Central Park jogging and uh, he was going up this hill and all of a sudden he, he stumbled and we went and he laid him down beside on the side of the trail and he he started shaking and he had foaming at the mouth and i said and i looked at him he looked real strange and uh the guys gathered around him and they said something in patua and he had a rastafari and jumped up off the ground scared me to death i mean I, he was there shaking his foam and next thing i know he done, he's jumped up I was with him the whole time in New York when he was being treated at Sloan Kettering. I was with him every day. Uh, I was with him when he was getting chemo and his locks fell out. The weight of the locks was just too heavy. The few hairs that were still holding was beginning to be really uncomfortable and he decided to cut it. That was quite a night. The death of reggae superstar Bob Marley on May 11th, 1981 came as a shock to many. Among the shaken was his personal doctor, Dr. Carlton Fraser, a.k.a. Pee Wee, who was part of the small inner circle with Bob Marley when he journeyed to Germany in that year for groundbreaking treatment from Dr. Joseph Issels. Bob Marley was the first Jamaican artist to achieve international superstardom, in the process introducing the music of his native island nation to the far-flung corners of the globe. His music gave voice to the day-to-day -day struggles of the Jamaican experience, vividly capturing not only the plight of the country's impoverished and oppressed, but also the devout spirituality that remains their source of strength. After Marley collapsed during a football warm-up session in Central Park, New York, on September 21st that year, tests revealed he had widespread cancer and was given less than one month to leave. His long dreadlocks had been cut off months before in New York, they had become too heavy for him due to the chemotherapy. Marley's trip to Bavaria in Germany was kept top secret, probably to avoid bad press. Although, rumors were spreading about his illness and his trip. We're live on the radio now, Bob, JBC Radio Live, and a lot of things have been said here in Jamaica all week long, Bob, and of all the things is people saying you're dead. Me dead. A lot of people have a dead leave me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Why, Bob? It's it, really, it's, it's unbelievable the kind of rumors been going around, Bob. Well, what I'm saying is that a lot of people have to die and leave me. Every time, any time the bad news come, everybody always have it. But when the good news come, nobody never get it yet. I wonder why. They have to try harder than that to kill me. And rumors can't do it neither. See, no, people have been saying you have cancer, Bob. Everybody can say what they want. Them. That was Bob Marley trying to fight the rumor about his death during an interview with Ron Sinclair of JBC Radio. In his last telephone interview at the beginning of November 1980, Marley promised his fans that he would be back in the studio in April for a new record. He also read an audio press release, said, I understand that writers and people in the press are very concerned about my health. I want to say thank you for your interest and that I'll be all right and I'll be back on the road again in 1981. Recording, performing with the fans we love. Beautiful. You know, Bob talking to you. Do I have no doubt. See? Good. Alan Cole, Marley's manager, said the suggestion to seek Issel's expertise came from a former football colleague with whom Cole had played football in Jamaica. Issel's was in New York City attending a cancer symposium. 
Issel's claim to cure cancer patients who had been declared incurable by conventional cancer treatments. During Issel's lifetime, his methods were controversial, and in 1961 he was charged with fraud and manslaughter for allegedly promising fraudulent cancer cures and for the subsequent deaths of patients under his care who refused standard cancer treatment. Aside Bob Marley, Lillian Barber Board, a British Olympic medalist, was treated by Dr. Issel's clinic for cancer but died from the disease. You are now watching Reggae Just Extra, the episode of Bob Marley Final Day. At his 36th birthday celebration in Germany, Dr. Carlton Fraser, Bob's personal doctor, Alan Cole, Marley's manager, Rita, Bob's wife, Cindy, Damian Marley's mother, and Sidella, Bob's mother, were in attendance. According to Fraser, Bob was in high spirit, but at the same time, it was sad that he could not lift his finger on his guitar due to a stroke that partially paralyzed the left side of his body. This frustrated him, and yet he simply had a positive charisma as everyone who met him in these last months testified. This is the place to be for your reggae gist, facts, and culture. A review of Issel's claims by the American Cancer Society concluded that there was no evidence that treatment with Issel's combination therapy or any related treatments were effective against cancer. There were reports that Dr. Issel's had been a member of Adolf Hitler's Nazi party but fell out of favor with its hierarchy because he continued to treat Jewish patients, which went against party policy. As a result, he was sent to the Russian front, one of the most dangerous arenas in the Second World War. He was a prisoner of war there until the conflict ended in 1945. A Alan Cole, Marley's manager, said no one close to Bob Marley knew about Dr. Issel's ties to the Nazis. He stated that Bob Marley making remarkable progress shortly after his arrival. For a while there was hope of a miraculous cure, but at the end of April 1981, Marley's health deteriorated dramatically. After clinic manager Issels told Bob Marley that there was nothing more he could do for him, he tried to travel back to Jamaica. Although, when the decision was taken seven months later for Marley to return to Jamaica, Fraser, his personal doctor, did not support the ideal, he left Germany for London to deal with personal and professional matters. Few days later came the shocking news, Bob Marley was dead. Just 40 hours after leaving Germany, he died at Cedars of Lebanon Hospital in Miami, Florida during a stopover on the morning of May 11, 1981. Sadly, he never made it back to his beloved Jamaica. I was dismantled. The news hit me hard. I was in London dealing with 12 tribes of Israel matters and a brother came and told me Bob had died. How is that? He was doing so well in Germany. Even if he was to die, it should not have been so quickly. It was crazy. I could not believe, Fraser said. Back in 1977, Bob Marley was diagnosed with a cancerous tumor in his toe. A popular story is that this was due to an injury sustained while playing football. However, Fraser supports an allegation that the reggae king was deliberately injected with cancer cells through a needle placed in a pair of shoes that was given to him. After the attempt to murder him at Hope Road when he was shot, Bob retreated to the hills. A few days later, he was given a pair of sneakers. When he tried it on, a needle went into his big toe and it was so hard to get it out. He then went on tour, and when he was in London the toe got worse, and it was said they would have to amputate the leg at the hip, said Fraser, Bob Marley's personal doctor. Bob Marley's funeral at Nine Mile followed all of Jamaica and celebrated him like a saint. His mother sang the first song from his last album at the memorial service, Coming In From The Cold. Throughout his short life, Marley left behind loving, empowered, joyous, and emancipating stories and songs. Upon his death, his final words to his son Ziggy were money can't buy life. May the soul of brother Bob Marley continue to rest in peace, amen. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe, give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis.